Hey, welcome to another Azure Quick Start. And today what we're going to be doing is building an ASP.NET Core application using Visual Studio Team Services. My name is Damian Brady and I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. So today we're going to be going through the Build Your ASP.NET Core app, which is on docs.microsoft.com. So the first thing we need to do is clone our code. So there's sample code that's available to us. If you go to Code and then Files in VSTS, you should be able to scroll down and import your repository. Now I'm getting this from GitHub. Um, you can also start from scratch and have your own ASP.NET Core application and work from that. Especially from the command line, it's really easy to do a .NET new MVC or .NET new blank or any of those different options that are available to you. Right, so we've got our code and let's create a build to compile our ASP.NET Core application. So we click on New Definition in the build section. And I want to choose the template that, will, that knows how to build ASP.NET Core applications. Now this will set up all of the steps that are required for ASP.NET Core, but there's a few things I need to answer first. I need to give it an agent queue. Now there's hosted queues that are available. The hosted VS 2017 queue is probably one of the best ones for ASP.NET Core, but the hosted Linux preview also works as well. You can also use your own private queues, and this is what you'll want to do if you're using Team Foundation Server rather than Visual Studio Team Services. I'm going to choose the hosted uh, VS 2017, like it says in the uh, docs as well. The rest of the steps you really don't need to change. There's restore, build, test, and publish, and they're just calling the .NET command lines. I'm going to make one other change here, which is to go to triggers and then enable continuous integration. So all that means is that whenever I commit and push some code to the server, it will run a build for me and compile my ASP.NET Core application. And that's all I need to do. So let's save and queue. We'll choose that agent queue. You can override this on a, on a build by build basis. So let's leave it the way it is, save and queue, and then that build's being queued. If we click on that build number, we get taken to the actual build as it runs. So this is looking for a hosted agent, which is spun up in Azure for you as well. And then when that makes that uh, agent available, it'll start building our application. So now that build's completed, we can click on the build number itself to have a look at a bit of a summary of what happened. So we can see that uh, when the build started and what commit was associated with this actual build itself. If we had some tests that had published their test results, we could see that, even code coverage. And if we had a linked deployment, which we'll get to in other quick starts, uh, we can see the link to deployments as well. So here are all our associated changes. Uh, and if we had work items linked to those associated changes, then we would see them there as well. So there you have it, a really quick way to get started with ASP.NET Core in Visual Studio Team Services.